most headlines and YouTube channels have been saying that the Arizona real estate market is crashing or is going to crash. But when you really look at the data, it tells a little different story. Now I am not saying that our market hasn't changed because it has. In fact, from our peak, which was in May of 2022, home values have seen a decline by 13%. Our market right now, it's tricky. So if you are looking to buy or sell a home in the next few months, pay attention to this video because we're going to talk about a few things that you need to pay attention to and some things you should probably completely disregard. To help put things in perspective, you have to look back just a little bit. 2021 and the first half of 2022 were markets like we had never seen before. Home prices rose drastically while interest rates were historically low. It was really the perfect storm. The total number of homes sold in all of 2021 were the most we have ever seen at over 108,000 homes sold in the entire year. The year that comes in second is 2005 with just over 104,000 homes sold for that year. And 2020 is in third place with a little over 103,000 homes sold for that year. And in 2022, we were on track to see the same type of numbers sold for the entire year until we hit August. And that's when the number of homes sold began to slow down and they began to slow down pretty quickly. And we ended the year 2022 with about 84,500 homes sold total for that year. And this was all due to interest rates, which peaked in October. However, buyers kind of began to pull back from the market around July, but that wasn't really felt in the market until about September and October. Then the last quarter of 2022 felt like the market came to an absolute standstill. And when you look at the total number of homes sold from 2021 to 2022, there was a 22% decrease in the number of homes. And when you take a look at just December 2021 to 2022, there was a 45% difference in the number of homes sold in that month alone. Now, what you have to keep in mind when you hear these numbers, especially if they are used in headlines, is that these reporters are using the numbers from the hottest markets that we have ever seen to the slowest market that we have seen in 20 years. Not to mention that many people felt like this happened overnight. So mentally, this was a big blow to people and it brought back flashbacks of 2008. See, when things were a little bit better, everyone felt just better about the overall economy. People were thriving, we didn't have this massive inflation, gas prices were lower, and people were able to move where they had always wanted to live. Now, with the shift in the market, everyone's kind of looking at everything as everything's bad. People are remembering what happened in 2008 and they do not want to get caught up in it. And that's why it's important to understand and look at the data so you can make an informed decision for you as a buyer or a seller. And this is why I make these videos. If you've gotten value out of this, please make sure to hit that like button. And if you haven't done so already, make sure you subscribe. I would really appreciate it. So here's the thing. If you hear the media comparing numbers from the past two years, they are going to sound terrible. And this is exactly what we're hearing right now. What you need to understand is why these numbers are changing the way that they are. And the biggest reason is affordability. When mortgage rates went from 3% to over 7%, this had a great effect on buyers. They could no longer qualify for the mortgage that they were pre-approved for. So these buyers had to drop out and sit on the sidelines. And for those under contract on new construction, this meant canceling the deal altogether. And because of these things, we saw our inventory begin to rise. In the Phoenix market, we actually saw our inventory begin to rise earlier than many cities in the US. We began to see these increases in April of 2022. And on April 23rd, the Cromford report reported that over the previous four weeks, a total of 10,059 new listings were added to MLS. Now, if you don't remember what the total number of listings in MLS at that current time was, and why would you? They were sitting right around 4,500 for all of the Phoenix area. So this was a big increase to our inventory. Part of the reason that our inventory began to increase so drastically was that new construction was now starting to add their homes into our MLS system. So even though the homes were for sale before, they were not in MLS, so we didn't have a real way of reporting it. Now they were flooding our MLS system, making our inventory spike. We were also starting to see some of the short-term rental owners put their homes on the market. They were starting to fear that they were gonna miss the peak of pricing and wanted to get out while they still could. These two factors really made our inventory spike. Now prior, homes would go on the market and they would sell rather quickly. Now they were starting to sit on the market longer. So all of this happened in April and then right around the corner was May. And May is when the media picked this up and really ramped up all of their reporting on a housing bubble. 
when in reality, we were just heading back to a more normal market. Now, home prices have come down and there are going to be some people that are a little underwater. If you bought your home in late 2021 or early 2022, you could owe a little more on the home than it's worth. But that metric alone does not mean a housing crash is coming. In fact, Lance Lambert of Fortune Magazine recently said this, unlike the last cycle, overheated housing markets this time around barely sat at their peak. Why does this matter? It means this correction has only put a small slice of recent buyers underwater. You also have to keep in mind that these people have locked in a low interest rate and are probably pretty happy with their payment. So moving is probably not really an option. They are just going to stay put. What we have been experiencing over the last few years is a real problem with supply and demand. And although through 2021 and most of 2022, we had a huge demand with very little supply. But to have a crash, we would have to see a radical change in our supply. And although it did go up, since October, it has actually been coming down. And while our demand really slowed down that last quarter of 2022, that too has changed and really began to increase beginning January 1st, which really caught most people off guard. Because of the seasonality of our market, most really felt that our demand would pick up just normally as it always does. But the level at which it actually picked up, that's what has been surprising. Now, one of those data points that I said you need to pay attention to are the number of homes actually going under contract. This shows the demand in the market. And since the beginning of January, we have actually had more homes go under contract than we did in January of 2022. Another metric that does not spell crash. The Cromford Report said this, we experienced a huge increase in demand during January, though this was from an extremely low level as of January 1. The number of listings under contract rose from 5,456 to 7,810, an increase of 43%. This by a wide margin is the highest percentage increase we have ever measured from one month to the next. It shows us buyers are getting used to interest rates around 6%. And when we look at our contract ratio, which measures supply and demand, this too has been changing since January in a positive direction. This means that more homes have gone under contract than have come on the market. We actually have a stronger market right now than we did at the same time in 2019. And this is all because we have less inventory right now. Why is this important to look at? Because 2019 was much more of a normal market. Now, the thing to know about this is that it's normal for us to see an uptick in activity in the first half of our year. This is our buying season. Our season here in Phoenix begins before a lot of the other selling seasons begin in other cities. But our season also lasts through the spring selling season that you hear about in all the other cities. So I will not be surprised if we continue to see our demand through our spring market. This is when we have a ton of out of town visitors. They all come to enjoy our beautiful weather and all the events that we have going on here. It's beautiful. Something else that caught a lot of people off guard was the jump in mortgage applications in January, which was up by 28%. This was a shock, especially after the record low levels that we saw in December, which was one of the slowest that we've seen in a very long time. Now, I know many wanna talk about pricing, even though interest rate does have a big impact on what your overall payment's gonna be. And as I said, we have come down from our peak pricing, which was in May, to now. But when you look at the overall year over year number, we are only down by 4%. And I anticipate that number to stay negative for the entire year. Why? Well, I believe we are going to see our prices somewhat stagnate through the rest of the year. But because from January to May in 2022, the prices were still going up, this means that even if prices stay pretty close to where they are right now, that year over year number is going to get larger. So we just have to watch and see if that median home sales price stays right around that 430, which is where it is right now. I believe it's going to stay pretty close to that. It might shift up and down, but I don't think we're gonna deviate from that very much farther. What will be down this year? The total number of transactions. But much of this is due to all those people that either bought a home or refinanced and locked in a super low interest rate, anywhere from two and a half to 3%. Those owners are likely not going to be selling unless they absolutely have to. But from January until now, although the number of homes closed is lower and the prices are down from this time last year, the total sales volume is actually up. The total dollar volume closed is higher than it was in February of 2020, just three years ago. This is because prices are much higher than they were in 2020. And based on the number of homes under contract, February's numbers should be significantly higher than January. 
Now, this does happen every year, so it is a pretty safe bet. Real estate is cyclical, and it is important to know where we are in the cycle. And right now, we are sitting in skepticism. And that is defined as doubt as to the truth of something, which makes perfect sense. What I see happening through 2023 is we are going to see some ups and downs when it comes to the demand, and it is all going to be centered around the interest rate. Understanding some baselines and getting some perspective before you go and read these headlines is really gonna help you stay rooted in the truth as to what's going on in our market currently. And if you like this video, make sure you take a look at this one. If I can answer any questions for you, please feel free to reach out. As always, I thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.